the Oregon situation, <laughs> oh man, it, it's it's crazy online on Twitter and social media. Social media is a place where people just talk and they have no idea what they're saying. You know, and I see people that are so called respected journalists that have no clue. You got somebody like Roland Martin talking about, oh, why isn't it called? Uh, why is there no need for the National Guard when it was a National Guard in Ferguson? People don't have any facts. All they hear is the headline that says federal building in Oregon taken over by armed militia. They don't take two seconds to Google it and figure out what's actually happening. Now, what's going on is there was a protest of about 300 people for a, actually a valid cause. What happened is you had a father and son, Dwight Lincoln Hammond, who's age 73, and his son, Stephen Dwight Hammond, 46, both live in a place called Diamond, Oregon, in Harney County, basically in the middle of nowhere. They got found guilty in 2012 of arson. And the reason they said they set the fire was because of an invasive species of plant that was interfering with their ability to farm and graze. But what the uh, the courts were saying was that they were illegally game hunting and they burned the land to destroy the evidence of the actual illegal game hunting, right? Now, the federal mandatory minimum of burning land that is owned by the federal government is five years. But they petitioned the court and said, hey, wait a minute, that's too much. That's a federal overreach, et cetera. Now, the local court actually agreed with them. They said, OK, cool. You got that. So they had their sentences reduced. The father got three months and the son got one year. They went to jail and served their term out. But here we are in 2015. Judge Ann Aiken, who was the chief U.S. district judge of Oregon, reviewed the case and said, you know what? You guys didn't serve enough time. You guys should not have been able to avoid the federal mandatory minimum of five years. So you, you guys are going back to jail, you know, and they, they tried, they tried to file certiorari, which means they tried to go to the Supreme court and that was rejected. I don't know how that's possible, how their petition to file was rejected. It, it makes no sense. But anyway, so they have to go back to jail to finish their five year term minus the time they already spent for the father. He has five years without the three months and the son just has four years. So, this caused the protests of 300 people that are saying this is a federal overreach. This is too much. They already went to jail. They served their time. Now you want to say they have to go back to jail because the federal government is overreaching into local matters. The local judge said that they have to just do the time they did. They went to jail and served their time. Now they got to go back. So that's why the protests happened. Nobody got hurt at all. Nobody's been injured. After the protest, you had a splinter cell of about 100 to 150 people that all gather around this federal building in the federal building and people people hear that and they hear white people with guns they think timothy mcveigh it's like no 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 here is the actual federal building in front of you this is a wildlife reserve it's like if you ever been to a, a cabin or out camping this right here would be the building that you go to to get uh <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, nature pamphlets and visitor information. This is not like some type of federal building with people. And, and also the building was closed over the holiday weekend. So there was nobody there. They just went to it and camped out. They're armed, but nobody was injured. There are no hostages, nothing like that. So when people say they need to call the National Guard and that they're terrorists for what? for camping out in front of a federal building with guns? What crime are they committed? Maybe trespassing? Is trespassing the equivalent to terrorism? People are so racially sensitive and quick to say, oh, well, this person is a terrorist because they're white and they have guns. No, they're not. What have they committed that makes them a terrorist? Let's get past our emotion and let's figure out what's actually happening rather than just spouting off at the mouth inaccurate statements like Roland Martin, who is an actual pundit on air who has a big network and people that follow him you can't say stuff like that and not know what you're saying right and people are saying oh well they did it in ferguson ferguson was a completely different situation and baltimore you had people that were destroying the city burning up people's businesses attacking people shooting people the murder rate in both of those cities has skyrocketed 
two all-time highs. In Baltimore, Maryland, you had about 330 people that were murdered in 2015. Now, has anyone been hurt in Oregon at all? No. But in Ferguson, Missouri, yes. In Baltimore, Maryland, yes. And Black Lives Matter, please. What have they done to help the black community? They have done nothing of any substance other than make the black community worse. So terror is, come on, let's let's get past our emotion and figure out what's really going on. The case in Oregon is actually valid. And I'm not saying that the Black Lives Matter group doesn't, I'm not saying that they never have any valid issues, but the way they go about it is completely destructive. And nine times out of 10 is just to promote themselves, is to promote ideas of racial feelings and insensitivity and white supremacy and all kind of other boogeyman crap that don't even exist, right? If you want to have a true respected organization, attack issues that actually matter and actually exist. Attack the issues of black on black violence, single parent households. 70% of all households feature a single parent in a black community. That is the biggest problem. Not police killing people. That's such a low hanging fruit. It's irrelevant. But see, that's the whole Black Lives Matter mantra. They want to go after the low hanging fruit. So they want to be able to get more benefits, more attention, more of an economic come up. It's not about justice. It's about trying to get whatever they feel entitled to. In Oregon, they actually are trying to get justice for a legitimate gripe. And if anyone had the same situation going on in the black community, let's say it was you. You did something, you went to jail for it, and it wasn't a mistake. The judge gave you a sentence, and you went to jail, served your time. You come home, and then they say, oh, no, no, no. We're going to send you back to serve more time because the court made a mistake. If the court made a mistake, why do I have to get penalized for that? And the proper thing to do would be to go about it in a way that does not hurt people and in a way that is organized and it makes sense. Rather than tearing your own city down and looting liquor stores and stealing Jordans out of a footlocker in a mall. All this terrorism and hashtags on Twitter need to cut it out and figure out what's really happening before you say anything else. That's all I got for this video. If you like what you heard, please rate, comment, share, subscribe. Peace.